Hello, everyone, and welcome from joining the AI Anywhere YouTube series. My name is Nishant Kohli, Abam Product Manager for Google Distributed Cloud. Today, we're going to cover delivering modern AI experience at the retailer from one to thousands of locations. So let's dive into our agenda. We'll cover retail trends towards the industry and how Edge can help. We'll talk about Google Distributed Cloud for retailers. We'll go into the depth of some Edge AI use cases and then we'll end with a deployment an app at scale with a demo. So we've heard from many of our retailers, they all have different challenges and all looking to modernize the retail end customer experience. As we dig in, we find that modernization means improving speed, agility, at which new technology and experience can be delivered to our customer. This is a response to three main focus areas that we're thinking through. Consumer behavior and expectations is changing. And fast, customers want newer ways of engaging while they go to the store, how they interact while they're in the store. And then in many cases, you know, every retailer is out there just one click away or one TikTok video away from creating a trend, creating a new business model or busy new environment for their customers to deliver what their demands might look like or how the products that they're expecting to grow in the industry. And at the end of it, it's really economics climates, how they can control their costs, increase revenue, and increase business across the board. Now, the increased health of the business is critical, but then also at the same time, they're looking to see how can they reduce the overall retail experience and the overall costs that they have to manage. Walking through with our customers, we see technology teams sitting down and figuring out how to modernize. The challenge that they see is in the retail is today is not just around how can they scale, but how can they deliver something where the connectivity could be unreliable? Or maybe they lost connectivity due to some challenges that they're going through, but the business operations has to continue. This makes de deployment difficult. It makes challenging ways of how can they deploy at scale consistently across many locations. What ends up happening as they're developing new experience, new solutions, it comes with either a new platform or overall new hardware it makes it a lot harder for them to continue their operation. The other aspect is thinking about AI applications require new technologies, new capabilities, where their legacy hardware or legacy solutions can't really meet the need. So let's look at what are we doing, how are we solving those challenges. As I mentioned, bandwidth and connectivity tends to be a big challenge. Then thinking about privacy, things like PII information, PCI, PHI, and other custom country regulation rules that are impacting their business is driving the need for getting something that could be on-prem and not in the cloud. Some of this can be related to by legacy applications, could be tied to cost, and then all of this brings it a challenge. How can they take new technology in mind? So the cloud, if the cloud isn't an answer, what is? What can we do to help our customers? Well, that's where Google Distributed Cloud comes into play which helps our customers deliver and provide the business continuity that they need, but in their own vicinity and their own four walls or on their own retail stores, yet still meeting the same objective that they had when they were thinking about moving to the cloud. This could go from anywhere, a single store. It could be hundreds of stores or thousands of stores. It doesn't matter. We are able to bring Google technology and Google's AI innovation to the customers in their own vicinity, in their own data center, or in their own retail stores. Our platform allows them to go deeper. It allows them to enable legacy application while modernizing and moving to containers at the same time. Now let's look at what is Google Distributed Cloud bringing to our retail customer. Before we do that, let's step back and look at the journey. Google Distributed Cloud is not something that was born yesterday. We've been at it for many years. First, we needed this for our own use cases, where YouTube was the key driver for building a distributed cloud edge architecture. Now, why did we need to do that? Well, we needed to provide a consistent behavior and experience to customers across the world. Now, for, to do that, we had to deploy tens of thousands of servers across 200 countries, which was no easy task. Yet daunting, but we were able to go deliver that where the customers can have a unified and in a consistent behavior, regardless of where you are in the world, pulling that cat video. As you know, many years ago, that video became famous where people just love watching cats, but almost broke the internet at the same time. To solve that, we needed some sort of caching technology that was local, closer to the people where they're providing and watching the videos. That's the Google Distributed Cloud 
architecture was formed. Now, this is something that we were able to further bring to our customers in a form factor that really meet their needs. Originally, these were deployed in Google's data center across all the edge locations and edge pops that Google has, but we were able to now then take the same form factor and bring it into a rack form factor for our telco or enterprise customers. Now, those customers really liked what they had received, but it wasn't the right form factor for our retail customers. They needed something more modular, more smaller, that could fit in a closet that doesn't have a core data center cooling or power capabilities. That's we came up with a new form factor, which is our three node Google Distributed Cloud servers, now delivered G8 earlier this year to our customers. That form factor is a three node architecture which meets the customer's need. It brings them the capability that they need at the location that they need it as well. So let's dive a little bit more into the architecture, our distributed cloud edge for the server edition. Looking at it, first thing we had to think about is availability. We wanted to ensure that the overall solution and architecture was highly available, ruggedized. That's why you see the three node architecture, which is two plus one for redundancy. Now, most customers tend to have an architecture which is an HA architecture, which is an active-passive environment, where you have an active node and a passive node, where if one dies, you have fully capability to fail over, but really what you're doing is utilizing only half of the resources you need. That's why we thought the three-node configuration makes best sense for our customers to be able to provide a HA environment, and even in case of a failure, you are fully available at the same capacity you started with from day one. Google Distributed Cloud is a fully managed platform. Now, what does that mean? All the way down to the, from the hardware, to the BIOS, to the OS, and even to the container technology, it's provided and managed by Google. What that means to the customer is frees up their IT team, their technology staff to really focus on the business and the application not necessarily having to worry about the infrastructure that's needed to run their business. That is now responsibility of Google. Just like our SRE team manages our data center across the globe, they are now managing, think of it almost like an extension to your team, but we're bringing our SRE team to monitor your ecosystem where we deliver the Google Distributed Cloud platform to. Originally, this is, as I mentioned, in a 3U form factor half depth, so the size meets the customer needs. We're also looking at scalability at the same time. Now, generally, when customers are talking to us in the retail space, they're talking thousands of locations, if not in upwards of tens of thousands of locations. How do we have that scalability, ability to deliver supply chain and manage across the board, and then being able to have a single pane of glass for fleet management, where customers can go to a single console, see all of their location either operating the logging that's needed, the monitoring, and the metrics that go along with it in a single consolidated way. So think of it as almost like the cloud, but the cloud is now coming to you in your own environment, yet you have the same tooling and the capability that you would have in the cloud. So extensibility is a key aspect as well. A lot of our customers shared that they're in this modernization journey, which is amazing, we love it. But modernization is not a you know, one-stop shop. It's a journey they have to go through, which could take several years. And from that perspective, we needed to make sure that we can run their legacy application side by side with the modern application. The legacy applications could be running in a VM, while the new applications are developing and running in containers. So we wanted to give them an ecosystem and a platform that can run both ecosystem at the same time or both environments at the same time while they are on this modernization journey. As we continue the story, the flexibility, ability to take different form factors and deliver that at, to the customer was a key attribute. So even in the three node configuration, we have different configurations where it could be medium size or a large size to really meet their application needs and then also optimizing for cost. Now, looking through our ability, let's look at the software stack. What are the core software capabilities that we think through? And across the board, it's four pillars that we're thinking around. One of them is policy management. Security and reliance, reliability was a key attribute of that. So how do we take the same cloud security we bring in our infrastructure, to, in our data center, to our customer's environment? So we're extending the Google Cloud security into Google Distributed Cloud. Ability to give the customers to have enhanced ability around policy, 
management, enforcement of those policies across their corpus. And now you can pick and choose. Not all stores are alike. Some are smaller, some are larger. Some might have certain aspect of applications that are needed to maybe run your pharmacy or you have a you know, gas station as part of that store as well. So all application stacks vary from one configuration and location. So we want to be able to give you that modularity and configuration ability so you can pick and categorize your stores based on your needs and then being able to apply a set of policies and constraints that meet those. And then, as I mentioned, ease of development and deployment became critical. As now Google is managing your infrastructure, you don't have to worry about that, but deploying your applications and ability to scale the new capabilities, new software develop deployments that you have to do was one of the key aspects. So we wanted to make sure we provided something where you can leverage CI-CD integration, you can leverage GitOps declarative deployment strategy, and being able to use our GKE config management to deliver the same solution that you're used to delivering in the cloud, but now in your own environment. I mentioned centralized application and monitoring. It was a key aspect. That's something you get right out of the gate. All the logging, all the metrics, everything that you're getting from all your different locations are centralized in Google. So now you have one-stop shop to do any kind of management of those logs, maintenance of those logs, and any metrics that you want to define to be able to make some business critical decisions are all centralized in Google. You can then leverage the power of Google's first party services like BigQuery and others and Looker and create your own dashboards and create a business model that can meet your business needs. It could be segmented by region, geography, different applications areas that you're driving. It's up to you at that point. The world is your oyster that you decide how this business and how the technology can enable you to run your business better. And lastly, we talk about resiliency. Ability to self-heal was a critical aspect to most of our customers. What does that really mean? Well, when a node outage does happen, it could be related to someone just pulling the power cable or a hardware failure. The rest of the application stack needs to come up online automatically or as automated as possible where the end user doesn't have to do anything. Generally, what we heard from our customers is when they're talking about the retail stores, there's not an IT staff or technology staff that's on site. These are cashiers, these are people that know about that specific industry, but maybe not the technology. So we want to make sure that any failures that happen either are automatically recovered or can be remotely serviced by a Google SRE team to ensure there is no disruption to your business. Those are some of the core attributes that are built into the software stack. Now, Going through, we heard from our customers, many of them needed different aspect of the product capability when it comes to AI. Also, maybe they needed less of the HA capability. Thus, we announced coming soon our GPU enabled nodes where now you can take advantage of AI capability to do inference at the edge. A lot of it has to do with visual inspection type tools and things that are driving that. And then on the lower cost side, customers are like, Certain stores don't need the HA that you have built in, which is amazing, but I need something that has a lower footprint, a lower cost. Thus, we're introducing a single node uh, environment as well where the customers can pick and choose either on a highly available redundant environment or a single node environment. Most cases, that's good enough for their business. Outages generally don't happen because you know, there's a lot of hardware failures. A lot of times we've heard from our customers, most outages are due to maybe network connectivity or software updates that they were making and less about you know, the hardware that failed. In some cases we've heard it's 10 to one. So there would be 10 failures that are non-hardware related and one was due to the hardware. Now, as we go through, let's talk about some of the core use cases that we heard from our customers and potentially what is the art of the possible that we've heard from customers thinking about what can they do with this technology. Now that we have given you this asset and technology, now new use cases and art of possibles coming up. It goes from all the ways from laying the foundation for an AI use case, but simply as managing their infrastructure as in the core application like point of sale system, which is business critical. It could be other back office applications that are needed to run their business. Um, ability to increase their demand and then being able to have agility. Maybe it's you know football Sunday and the rush is going through or it's a Super Bowl Sunday and we have a lot of people coming through. How do I manage that scale for that period of time? 
how do we make sure that we have enough staff in, on the floor or the shop or the store to be able to manage for that scale. At the same time, maybe I want to roll out a new software update to our customers where we're enabling new coupon or new assets that they can take advantage for that during a period of time. So that overall platform helps enable that. The other areas we've heard from our customers tend to be around cost savings, loss prevention, shrinkage. These are the things that are consistently their challenge with. And how do they take the asset that they already have or the data that they have, how do they combine the data with AI to make some critical business decisions near to real time closer to their stores within the region or even the geography they're in. So, you know, think about with when I go to the store now, in most cases, you know, my kids don't even want to go to a store. They want to do everything online and things get delivered to them, but the world is changing. And with that changing world, the retailers have to be able to adopt and adapt to it. So being able to have selfless checkouts where the customers are just going through and able to check out on their own, doesn't have to wait for individuals and then operate how they want to. So being able to provide that frictionless motion of product adoption or product sales is some of the key attributes. They also want to reduce stockouts. You know, it's amazing when you have lots of customers coming to your store and wanting to purchase, but when they're missing that item that they want, it's a bad customer experience. They want to ensure that that customer experience is great they come into the store, they get everything they want, and they purchase everything and scale out the business across the board. So those are some core use cases we've heard from our customers. And it could go from you know, taking advantage of visual inspection with cameras. It could go with look, looking at your point of sale system. Maybe it's a experience you're bringing to the customer through your loyalty program. Taking a look at all of those data assets, combining it together, and leveraging our AI technology in store is some of the core uh, use cases that we've heard from our customers. Now looking through uh, around talking to our customers, bring that intelligence inside the retail and partner. We are going to need a partner ecosystem to be able to do that. Not everything is going to be provided by Google. What we're providing is really a platform, a technology to enable those use cases. Now think about some of those core use cases could be self-checking, could be self selfless checkout, could be visual inspection and looking at your store operations or just looking at stock out. So, but a lot of those require AI models to run, but that gets challenging. Why? Well, the lighting may differ. Maybe it's dark outside at the time and there's you know, a thunderstorm rolling through. All of those things can impact your visual inspection of the AI model that you're running to check out, are your shelves stocked out properly? Is it the right material in the right location? So for all of that, you need to be able to train the models in different type of use cases, different type of environments, and then be able to deploy at the edge. That's, again, where Google Distributed Cloud is the key attribute there. Being able to do the training in the cloud and inference at the edge or inference in your location is critical. The latency is important. The reliability is important. At the same time, being able to update and roll out new changes on a regular basis is a critical aspect so that scale and flexibility was critical for their business need. And that's where, again, Google Distributed Cloud is helping our customers drive that. Lastly, if you look at, you know, around alerting and capability, the retail landscape and stores continues to evolve. Uh, Post-pandemic, a lot of customers are changing how they operate, how they want to interact. So some of these changes include new in-store shopping behaviors, where traditional shoppers are looking at new ways of Either shopping could be you know, uh, e-commerce, could be gig e economics. All of these things are changing and introducing new behavior where the customers are now asking this, or not just asking, they're demanding our retailers change their operation style and then take advantage of technology to solve their business need. So while these problems such as self-availability, uh, self-checkout or availability in the store solves becomes more important, but the technology is another aspect that you want to be able to grow as your business is changing. So going through, as I mentioned, to sum it out, um, a lot of this is really relied on the capability of the platform that you choose. Now, being able to have a platform that's consistent across the board and not having disparate platforms that are solving the same need or a separate need is becomes very critical. Mm -hmm.